is a certain feeling of magic that rings through Varanasi. Legend has it, the city along the banks of the Ganges was founded by Lord Shiva over 3,000 years ago. It's a river that has run through thousands of years of civilization. Here, pilgrims and poets alike trek to immerse themselves in the holy Ganga. And they say, one dip into its waters washes away a lifetime of sin. But our journey to the spiritual capital is a pilgrimage of another kind. We step inside the homes of some of the country's most skilled artisans. Over centuries, the Varanasi weavers have perfected their craft, navigating an intricate system of dots and threads, all with rhythmic precision. A sari from here used to be prized. Their work, the epitome of grandeur. Now, they are dying for demand. I love coming into the villages for inspiration. Well, you're certainly getting a, you know, a hero's welcome. <laughs> For Anita Dongre, though, it's a world she hopes to preserve. She's one of the country's most celebrated fashion designers. Recently, Dongre has found herself going back to her roots. So these are the handlooms where you get your fabric made? Yes. It's amazing. Yes. Handwoven silks have been a trade in decline as machines replace delicacy with efficiency. What's happening in our villages is, I think, the real India. Sadly, um, the fashion buyer um, who lives in cities doesn't get to experience this and I, but I think this is beautiful. You say it's very humbling. Why? How? I just can't imagine how do they punch those designs, hundreds of holes. I mean look at what's happening there. Yeah, These amazing. are like some, some, some patterns which don't make sense to me and with those patterns the way the threads come onto the loom that design comes to life. For me that's humbling. I, I don't think I could ever do that. I mean, I can't even begin to understand it. It's a tradition that's passed hand in hand through generations. A young child, uh, a weaver works, his home is on top, work comes down, he's seeing his father do it from the time he's born. He imbibes it so slowly, so gradually, and this can only be taught from father to son. And if one generation misses out on that, it's completely lost. It's, lo it's gone. Yes, it's gone, yes. Abdul Raf, the family Anita Dongre has employed for her latest line, now has five generations working the looms, kept alive by the new demand she's created. Look at the design, how big it is. For one, this is just one red lenga, and the pattern just goes and goes and goes. That's like hundreds of sheets of paper. I didn't realize this. So all this, all this is for one design. That's why the garment. design takes about a month to two months to prepare. To punch. That is months for one outfit. A term Anita continually refers to with patience as slow fashion. Back in Mumbai, she's committed to weaving a place for the handlooms on a typically fast-changing catwalk. Her latest collection, Grassroots, is a tribute to the dying art forms that were once the fabric of India. A collaboration between yesterday and today. A campaign that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also championed. The crafts that you see in India, hmm. you are really trying to push ahead with a revival. Hmm. Why is that important to you? Why does India need to revive that? Because it's, uh, it's, it's such an amazing treasure which I fear will be lost if, uh, if uh, people like me and the entire design community in the country doesn't do anything about it. Do you feel it is disappearing, that it is fading? The speed of the power loom is much more. The power loom has taken over the entire city. It makes economic sense for the weavers to work on power looms, but that does not mean we do not take steps to hold on to that handloom industry because that is, uh, that is its true form, that is its pure form, the kind of magic that you can weave on a handloom, you can never do on a power loom. So you have to make it relevant, you have to make the craft exactly. relevant for today's young, modern yes. Indian woman. Exactly. So obviously it's important for me to contemporize the garment and it's important for him to continue with his skill. And this partnership between design and craft is so important today because my poor weaver in Benares doesn't know what's happening in the world. He has a craft which he knows what to do, but someone like me needs to come and partner with him and say, these colors, these designs, this is what the young of today want. So this partnership is just so important for his craft to stay alive. It's as simple as that.
contemporizing the craft, carving a new place for the weavers, quite simply by making them trendy again. A walk through her store feels like she's doing exactly that. So you're reviving the craft. How do you make it uh, sustainable business-wise? Hmm. I'm just, just hoping that today's woman out there appreciates the craft and buys it and you know that's the only way I can sustain it because yeah. every time uh, somebody buys a Banaras handwoven garment I can go back and give more work to the weavers. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Anita Dongre is part of a new breed of personalities rocking India. A culture of innovators breaking boundaries while putting their rich heritage on the front lines. Malika Kapoor, CNN, Varanasi, India.